They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but many of the pictures that we are going to be looking at today leave no room for words at all. Pictures that will send a chill down your spine, not only because the people in them are no longer with us, but because we can see what's coming from a mile away. These are 10 chilling final photos taken of people. Carl Willenda. From the age of six, Carl Willenda has been performing stunts, later forming with a number of members of his family, an aerobatic troupe called the Great Willendas, who performed high wire escapades. Though multiple members passed over the decades due to the inherent risk of what they do, this didn't stop Carl from doing what he loved to do. On March 22, 1978, the then 73-year-old performer was attempting to cross a tightrope between two towers of the Condado Plaza Hotel in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Rico, 10 stories up when the unthinkable happened. Walenda was around the halfway point in his performance when the high winds became too much for him to stay balanced. He took a long pause and leaned forward at an almost 45 degree angle when this photo was snapped. The expression on Walenda's face in this photo shows he knows his fate long before it comes to pass, before the eyes of thousands of witnesses. As expected, seconds later, Carl was no longer on the tightrope. The unknown man. Almost 3,000 people were taken from us on September 11th, 2001, with thousands more injured. And while there are countless photos of the events that took place, few are more chilling than the unknown man, a picture taken by Richard Drew, a photographer for the Associated Press. Though the man in the photo was never identified, it's believed that he was employed on the 106th floor of the North Tower, in the Windows on the World restaurant. It's unclear if the man was trying to get to safety, or if he was taking fate into his own hands to escape the inferno. But either way, he wasn't alone, as over 200 people were seen in the same situation. Immediately after its publication, the photo was criticized around the world, as many felt it was too disturbing for widespread media, with some calling it cold-blooded. But it went on to become well-respected, and was even purchased by Elton John, who would go on to call it probably one of the most perfect photographs ever taken. Mark Matez on May 15, 1974, 21-year-old Mark Matez ascended to the roof of Trump Village, a 23-story housing project in Brooklyn, New York. For over an hour, he stood on the roof, contemplating the unthinkable as police spoke to him. The scene gained attention, drawing media, which included Bruce Paul, a copyboy for the Associated Press, who managed to snap several photos, including the final image of Mark Matez. As a private helicopter passed overhead, Mark made his decision which was caught in this photo. Nicholas Mavoli. On November 17, 2013, 32-year-old freediver Nicholas Mavoli was in the Bahamas attempting to reach a depth of 72 meters on a single breath. At 68 meters, the Florida native turned back, but then appeared to change his mind and kept descending again. After being underwater for an incredible 3 minutes and 38 seconds, Mavoli surfaced and flashed the OK sign to let his friends and colleagues know that he was OK, which was when this last photo of him was taken. You can tell by the look on the man's face that something was wrong, and just moments after it was taken, the diver fell backwards unconscious into the water. Though safety divers and physicians attempted revival for 90 minutes, it did not work. Doctors later revealed that he'd suffered pulmonary edema, which was when excessive fluid accumulates in the lungs. The last picture of him was featured in the New York Times, leading some readers questioning the ethics of the publication. John Edward Jones on November 24, 2009, 26-year-old spelunker John Edward Jones was exploring the ironically named Nutty Putty Cave in Utah with a group of friends and family when he became stuck in a crawl space. Allegedly, the medical student mistook the tight passageway for a well-known tunnel that ended with a space just large enough to turn around in. For over 27 hours, Jones was trapped upside down in the almost vertical passageway. Several volunteers came together in an attempt to save him with one of them taking this unsettling photo of the stuck man's feet sticking out of the hole. But in the end, none of the attempts were successful. It was soon after concluded by rescuers that it was far too dangerous to retrieve Jones. Ultimately, the lost explorer's family, along with the owner of the land that he was trapped on, decided to permanently close the cave. They even made sure the entrance to the passageway was sealed with concrete. He remains there to this day. Windmill Engineers in the mid-afternoon on Tuesday, October 29, 2013, 
four mechanics climbed up a windmill in Delta Wind's Piet de Witt wind farm in the Netherlands, seemingly to perform maintenance on the power generator. Things were going fine until suddenly a fire broke out in the engine room, quickly spreading to other parts of the structure. Though two of the mechanics swiftly made it to safety, the other pair weren't so lucky with an inferno blocking their path to the ladder. This photo shows the two men standing near the windmill's blades as smoke billows out behind them. Neither of them were able to free themselves from the windmill, and what remained was later found by firefighters. Sean McQuilkin on August 20th, 1975, Sean McQuilkin, his older brother Michael, and older sister Mary were hiking in California's Sequoia National Park. The siblings were climbing Morro Rock when dark clouds formed, something that should have sent the trio running, but one of them realized that their hair was rising up in a humorous way. They also noticed a tingling sensation on their skin, and Michael's ring began buzzing loudly. Instead of seeking shelter, they snapped a few photos, including this one of Sean and Michael, whose smiles quickly faded when the temperature suddenly dropped and hail began pelting them. The hikers then decided to descend the mountain, but it was too late and a bolt of lightning struck, unaliving them. This picture of the brothers stands as a warning to others to respect Mother Nature's fury and seek shelter during electrical storms, a warning that the surviving McQuilkins now heed every day. Trans-Asia Airways Flight 235 on February 4th, 2015, TransAsia Airways Flight 235 went down in the Keelung River in Taipei, Taiwan, just five kilometers from where it took off from. It was only two minutes into the flight when the pilots of the 10-month-old ATR-72600 plane reported that they were experiencing engine failure. Then, after they'd reached around 500 meters up, the other engine, which was keeping them in the air, was somehow shut down. This photo, which is a still frame from the dash cam of a vehicle traveling down the Huangdong Viaduct, a highway in Taipei, clearly shows the aircraft striking a taxi and part of the roadway as its pilots struggle to mitigate the damage it's about to experience. There were 58 people on board Flight 235, 53 passengers and 5 crew members. Of them, only 15 made it to the end. A second train. Just before dusk on October 15, 2011, friends Kelsey Webster and Essa Ricker, along with Kelsey's sister, Savannah Webster, were taking selfies near some train tracks in Spanish Fork Canyon, Utah. Smiling and waving at the passing train, they decided to take one more picture to remember the moment. It's unclear if anyone in the trio had the opportunity to take a peek at the alarming selfie that they had just taken, which shows a second train's headlights in the top right corner as it barrels down the tracks. The conductor and engine engineer tried to warn the girls, knowing that they couldn't stop, but the horn couldn't be heard over the other train. And exactly what you think happened, happened. This photo is now used as a warning to every photographer out there. Be safe when taking pictures, and always keep an eye on your surroundings. Brian Wells Around 2.30 p.m. on August 28, 2003, 46-year-old pizza delivery man Brian Wells walked into a PNC bank near Erie, Pennsylvania and slid the teller a note instructing them to hand over $250,000 or the collar he was wearing would go off. Shortly after exiting the bank with only $8,702, Wells was arrested. He tried to explain that he was an unwilling participant and begged them to disarm the device around his neck. The photo clearly shows Wells scared and pleading for help. However, moments after this was taken, the collar device went off. Soon after, police found documents in the man's car, detailing an extravagant scavenger hunt style puzzle, which allegedly needed to be completed in order to get the collar removed. The bank event was simply the first task in the puzzle. Disturbingly, investigators later determined that there was no way Wells could have solved the puzzle in time that he had remaining. Since then, Wells' involvement in the planning of the robbery has been the topic of heavy debate. But thank you guys for watching this. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, leave a comment, and of course share it. It helps me out tremendously in the algorithm. And of course, check me out on Twitch. I'm live almost every single day. Link is in the description. I will see you guys next time.